for problem nine. Suppose that in equation fifteen point eight, we do not have a good instrumental variable candidate for skipped, but we have two other pieces of information on students. Combined SAT score and cumulative GPA prior to the semester. What would you do instead of IV estimation? We can add SAT and GPA to the model and estimate the multiple regression model with three explanatory variables. We can see combined SAT and cumulative GPA as proxy variables for students' ability and motivation. Adding them to the model help obtain the setter's parabase effect of skipping classes on final exam scores. Let's solve problem ten. It's about the effects of. Attending a Catholic high school on the probability of attending college. For concreteness, let college be a binary variable equal to unity if a student attends college, and zero otherwise. Let CAS HS be a binary variable equal to one if the student attends a Catholic high school. A linear probability model is as follows. Where the other factors include gender, race, family income, and parental education. In part one, why might CAS HS be correlated with the Ayrton meal? Students' ability and motivation are unobserved factors in the Ayrton meal. They affect the probability of attending college. And might be correlated with whether the student attends a Catholic high school. Highly motivated and self-disciplined students have more chances to go to college, and they are also more likely to go to Catholic high schools. It may lead to an upward biased OLS estimate for the coefficient on the variable whether to attend a Catholic high school. Or we can think of it as a self-selection problem. The choice of attending a Catholic high school reflects the student's unobserved characteristics and capabilities. In part two, suppose we have data on a standardized test score taken when each student was a sophomore. What can be done with this variable to improve? Setter's parabase estimate of attending a Catholic high school. If we have data on the test score when each student was a sophomore in high school, we can use it as a proxy variable for each student's ability and add it to the model. After controlling for students' ability. We are more likely to obtain the causal effect of attending a Catholic high school on the probability of attending college. In part three. We have a binary variable equal to one if the student is Catholic. Discuss the two requirements needed for this to be a valid IV for the variable whether attending a Catholic high school. Which of these can be tested? The two requirements are the instrument relevance requirement and the instrument exogeneity requirement. The first can be tested. We regress the endogenous variable of whether the student attends a Catholic high school on the exogenous variable of whether the student is Catholic, and other exogenous variables in the structural model. This is the reduced form equation for the endogenous variable or the first stage regression model. The low hypothesis is that pi one equals zero 
if we reject the null hypothesis, the instrument relevant requirement is satisfied. For the instrument exogeneity requirement or the exclusion restriction condition, we can argue that being a catholic is not related to the unobserved factors in the error term in the structural equation after controlling for the student's ability captured by the PLOSIC variable, the test score as a sophomore student. In part 4, being Catholic has a significant positive effect on attending a Catholic high school. Do you think it is a convincing instrument for attending a Catholic high school? Yes, because it satisfies the two requirements for a valid IV. Let's find answers to problem 11. Consider a simple time series model where the explanatory variable has a classical measurement error. Mu t has a zero mean and is uncorrelated with x t star and e t. We observe yt and xt only. Assume that et has a zero mean and is uncorrelated with xt star and that xt star also has a zero mean. In part one, write xt star equals xt minus et and plug this into equation 15.58. Show that the error term in the new equation, say, new t is negatively correlated with xt if beta 1 is positive. What does this imply about the OLS estimator of beta 1 from the regression of yt on xt? We follow the steps and we can derive that the covariance between new t and xt equals minus beta 1 times sigma e squared. If beta 1 is positive, the covariance is negative. The OLS estimator beta 1 hat is biased towards zero. It is the result of classical measurement error in the explanatory variable. In part 2, in addition to the previous assumptions, assume that mu t and e t are uncorrelated with all past values of x t star and e t, in particular with x t minus 1 star and e t minus 1. Show that the expected value of x t minus 1 times nu t is 0, where nu t is the error term in the model from part 1. The proof is as follows. In part 3, are xt and xt-1 likely to be correlated? Explain. We can write out the covariance between xt and xt-1. The measurement errors are likely to be 
positively correlated for most economic time series. So, xt and xt minus one are likely to be correlated. In part four, what do parts two and three suggest as useful strategy for consistently estimating beta zero and beta one? In the regression of yt on xt, we can use xt minus one as an instrumental variable for xt, because xt minus one satisfies the instrument exogeneity requirement. It is not correlated with new t. It also satisfies the instrument relevance requirement. xt minus one is correlated with xt. We can verify it by regressing xt on xt minus one. The instrumental variable estimates for beta zero and beta one are consistent. Thank you so much for solving the problems with me. See you soon in the computer exercises section. Thank you for watching this video and subscribing to my YouTube channel. See you next time.